Good morning everyone out there in YouTube land. Um, figured today while I had a nice lazy day at home, I'd come down here to the dungeon and work on some forgotten Volkswagens. Yes, yes, I know. It's been a long time between videos. Um, I actually had to go back and have a look how long it's been. Uh, Krieger. Last video I did on that was the Hard Start Relay back in June last year. Uh, Tweedy, the alternator installed back in late 2015. And my beloved Super Beetle. <laughs> well, that's been five and a half years. I installed new CV joints. I haven't actually done much work to that car since, but it is... Uh, Got a few things I want to work on, but I really want to get back to Krieger. It would be good if I could get that on the road for next year's Volkswagen Spectacular, but I might be a bit ambitious there. But also, Tweedy desperately needs a new fuel filter. I'll show you why in a minute, but today... I want to get the dashboard out of Krieger. Um, there's a couple of reasons for that. I'll show you why shortly. Um, now, I did do a how-to guide on the dashboard removal out of these curved windscreen Super Beetles uh, about 10 years ago, I think. No, it'd be longer than that. Probably closer to 12 on the old forums. I know. Who remembers what car forums are? <laughs> anyway, um... I don't actually think there's a good video on YouTube of taking the dashboards out, but uh, hopefully I'll change that today. So four years ago when I did the alternator install on Tweedy, uh, I did also do quite a bit of other work to this car at the same time. I put a new clutch in it, which was also a YouTube video that I never ended up uploading. Uh, I replaced all the shift rod bushing and coupler, put in a quick shift kit and I replaced basically the entire fuel system because I found while I had it up in the air the fuel filter was completely chock-a-block full of rust particles you could not have jammed one more particle in there, it was full After replacing that, uh, this car was only on the road for three or four weeks and then the registration expired and it's been off the road ever since. So it did a grand total of, uh, I think, 93 kilometres since all that work was done. And let me show you what's happened to the new filter. So as you can see, this filter is heading down the same path as the other one which unfortunately for me means I'm gonna have to pull the fuel tank out and flush it out even possibly replace it but hopefully it won't be that drastic but that'll be a video for another day so I'm pulling this dashboard out for a couple of reasons first one is uh, pretty obvious all those decades under the Australian sun has just cracked the hell out of it, so it needs to be sent off and restored. But what old Volkswagen wouldn't be complete without some rust issues, which I can't get at until this dashboard's out of the way. Same rust spot on the driver's side, but not quite as bad. But also, the fun part of these curved windshield Super Beetles is the wiring loom is wedged between the dashboard and the firewall, so pretty much no access to work on it with the dashboard in, and what 40-something-year-old VW is complete without wiring issues, as you can see, or not see very well, this Beetle has had... A wiring short which has melted all the insulation off that wire there and melted it into all the others up there it's obviously been replaced everything actually works 
but um, I want to get that loom all tidied up and replace any damaged wires. So I'm jammed against a wall here with air conditioners, seats, engine stands and everything else in the way. And a lot of YouTubers love to complain about my videos being too dark. So I'm going to wake this thing from a nearly year and a half slumber and drive it outside to do this job. So now I have the opposite problem and it's too much light. But what can you do? Anyway, uh, if you've never done this job before, it'll probably seem quite scary and daunting at first, but it really is amazingly simple. There isn't much actually holding these dashboards in. Um, obviously, this car is right-hand drive, but the process for left-hand drive is exactly the same. Um, <laughs> just watch, watch it in the mirror if it makes it easier. Uh, the only difference will be if you have a car with original air conditioning fitted, uh, there will be a few extra bits of ductwork to remove. So all it actually holds these dashboards in are two screws down either side, a bracket in the middle, and a row of clips along the top under the defrost panel. But there are a few other things attached to the dashboard which we'll need um, removing uh, to get it out, mainly the... Uh, Bonnet release cable in there, the ventilation cables, and various electrical stuff, headlight switch, hazard, fan switch, and speedo. So when you're going to be working on electrical stuff, obviously it's a good idea to disconnect the battery first. So the hood or bonnet release cable actually can't be disconnected at this end, it needs to be disconnected at the latch end. So the release cable is very easy to disconnect from the latch. This hole here has a Phillips head screw down inside. That's on a right hand drive car. A left hand drive car would have it on this side. So it doesn't need to be undone completely, just a couple of turns to release the cable. And I should be able to show you better from the underside. A little bit of light on the subject. There we are. So by grabbing the cable, that should pull out of the latch like so. Now, very important to note at this stage. Now that cable's removed, if that bonnet is shut and latched, you have no way to um, unlock it. So what I normally do at this stage is remove the plunger part from the latch. That way it can't lock. It can still be shut with the button, but it can't be latched. Next up is the ventilation controls. The knobs just pull straight off. And these collars need unscrewing, which circlip pliers work very well. And repeat on the other side. So with those off, the ventilation controls are free of the dashboard. Now on American models there would be a little light in that plug there, which Lights the heater controls, that will need removing. I uh, believe it's probably just a push-in connector. Uh, we have our fan control knob removes. And then that nut just needs removing. And on. Next up we need to remove this switch panel. Uh, give us a bit better access to the speedo. So it removes by... These panels on the end just flick off very delicately, revealing the screw. Same deal on the other end. Done. And normally there's a screw behind this plug as well, but I'm pretty confident there's not on this car anymore. So the steering column needs dropping down out of the way. 
unplug all the electrical from it. See, there are two 6mm Allen bolts holding it up. So I haven't removed them completely, just slacken them off so that drops down. So now our switch panel come out far enough to release the two switches. Like so. And that now gives me access to the Speedo, which just pushes out from behind with a bit of jiggling. Probably hasn't been out in decades. And I'll feed through some more slack with the Speedo cable. There we go. Now it's just a matter of tagging all the wires and removing. So Speedo out of the way. And I'm starting to suspect now that this dash has been out previously. Notice all these wires are tagged already. And I just noticed the clip at the top there isn't actually engaged with the tab, so a sure sign it's probably been out, probably when it had that electrical short. And I just noticed, got lots of nice melted wiring here to the headlight switch. So that's probably when it was out. So next step is to remove the mounting screws. So there's one hiding here under this little plug. Got a Phillips head in there. And that wasn't even the right screw, so it keeps getting better. So our next one is in that hole just under there. And that one on the left is what is meant to be in there. So now I've got the exact same as that on the other side. So I've got the two screws out on this side. Now there's just one remaining behind the ashtray. Now I've bent the tabs here to drop the loom down. That just gives access to a 8mm nut on the firewall there. So now that that bracket's free, the dash can be removed. Now I've re-engaged all the clips along the top so it would be as per factory spec. So the dashboard will need to be slid towards the rear of the car, but be very delicate when doing that and don't move it very far as the wiring loom is normally attached to the back of the dashboard in a couple of spots. Whether it is still is in this car, we will find out. One other step before you go removing it is these plastic dash vents, which are only on the 74 and newer Super Beetles. Need disengaging from this metal panel. You'll see on the end they just have a bit of a lip around them. see here there's a tab holding the loom that just bends up and releases the headlight switch and we have the release cable to pull through and then the dash will be free to remove and done it really is that simple now I can see all the rust repairs. That's the worst of it there. And I'm pleasantly surprised. These Super Beetles are notorious for the fresh airbox rusting out. This one's actually pretty good. It's got a little bit of surface rust uh, starting. Nothing serious, no big gaping holes like you often see. A um, few other surprises for those <laughs> You don't know the story of this car from other videos. I pulled it out of a forest last year where it's been sitting since 2004. So it had lots of critters living in it. I uh, removed several rat's nests. You can see there are rats been chewing on the water drain tube. 
these white lumps here. <laughs> the previous owner tells me that it had a carpet snake that used to live in it, and you would often see it sunning itself on the dashboard. That is carpet snake poo. Lovely. And this wiring is just as bad as I thought it was. So you've got lots of melted wires there. The whole loom's kind of fused together. And it runs all the way up to the headlight switch. Volkswagen had the stupid idea of not fusing all the power wires to switches, only the bulbs. So shorts like that result in melted wires. But I've got spare looms that are in better condition I can use in this car. So I hope people find this useful. You can still run the car like this. I don't recommend it, but the car is still drivable. But there obviously is lots of live wires around the place.